Every Monday means the movies you ask for most. At 9, the Monday main event features Eddie Murphy and Richard Pryor in Harlem Nights. And at 11, they're that wacky pack of young comedians. They're the kids in the hall. We're talking seriously dangerous comedy here. And at 11.30, part two of the HBO original movie starring Richard Thomas and Ellen Green, Glory, Glory. Great entertainment you're looking for tonight only on HBO. The U log will not be seen tonight so that we can bring you the following program. <laughs> not necessarily the year in review. 1990, with Annabelle Gerwich and Tom Parks. Contributing editor, Meryl Marco. And special guest stars, Anne Bloom, Danny Breen, Rich Hall, Stuart Pankin, and Lucy Webb. Brought to you tonight by the Saudi Royal Family, the best friend your car has ever had. And by Texaco, we're the reason. And now, not necessarily the year in review, 1990. Good evening and welcome to the most comprehensive review of the events of 1990 on cable tonight. Annabelle, can you name the top story of the year? Well, that's easy, Tom. The Persian Gulf, Iraq, Kuwait. That's absolutely right. And guess who we've got standing by live? <laughs> Saddam Hussein. We'll be talking to him later. And we'll have Ted Turner and Jane Fonda with us live. But first, our top story at this hour. In a last-ditch attempt to frighten the Iraqi dictator Saddam Hussein, President Bush challenged him to a duel. <laughs> Saddam's response, if any, is not yet known. Annabelle? In Washington today, at a closed-door session of the House Armed Services Committee, Secretary of State James Baker outlined our immediate plans in the Persian Gulf. He revealed, in total secrecy, of course, that we would attack Saddam Hussein's forces no later than... Wait, 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 wait. Oh, sorry, I forgot. It's classified. <laughs> sorry. The nation was shocked and disillusioned this year as the scope of the savings and loan scandal became apparent. But possibly no town was as hard hit by the revelations as the tiny town of Bedford Falls, New York. <laughs> Accusations about the Bailey Brothers Building and Loan Association arose when the owner of the Bedford Falls Bank, Henry Potter, also known as Old Man Potter, accused George Bailey and his Uncle Billy of mismanagement. <laughs> George Bailey refused to be interviewed, but was quoted as saying, I wish I had never been born. <laughs> East and West Germany were reunited this year amidst a celebration which included the raising of the German flag over the Reichstag, a magnificent fireworks display, and the consumption of large quantities of alcohol. The celebration lasted into the morning when the newly reunited Germany in a drunken stupor invaded Poland. <laughs> As 1990 began, President Bush was enjoying enormous popularity, as was evident in Congress's response to his State of the Union address. Today, democracy is restored. Panama is free. <laughs> and balances the budget by 1993 with no new taxes. thing we need to do is mess around with Social Security. 1990 proved to be a difficult year for President Bush as he dealt with the continuing military action in Panama, coped with the HUD scandal, struggled with the savings and loan fiasco, contended with the problem-plagued space program, battled the nation's economic decline, fretted about increasing drug problem, tussled with Congress over the budget crisis and grappled with the Iraq invasion of Kuwait. While the president admits it's been a tough year, he adds that he feels like he's in good shape for 1991. <laughs> Among the big stories of 1990 was the extraordinary FBI tape of Washington, D.C. Mayor Marion Barry smoking crack. 
seeing a public official stoop so low and on national television sent a strong message to the youth of America. And Dan Quayle, whose dad made a few phone calls to get him into the National Guard and thus avoid active service in Vietnam, is on his way now to the Persian Gulf to visit the troops for the new year. We're going to kick his butt when he gets here. <laughs> And later, we'll show you, for the first time anywhere, the never-before-seen Hollywood screen test of a very young Dan Quayle. Here's a sneak preview. Dan Quayle, screen test, take 13. Action! <laughs> I might be pregnant. In less than a minute, I'll know for sure with this. Clear Blue Easy. It's the easiest pregnancy test ever. Just one step and no messy test tubes. Now all I have to do is wait, and within moments, I'll know for sure. <laughs> I'm pregnant. A lot of guys, you're pregnant. It's as easy as that with the Clear Blue Easy Home Pregnancy Test from EverReady. <laughs> this week on The Flash. The Flash falls in love. That was wonderful for me. How was it for you? Well, it was over kind of fast. <laughs> Want to do it again? I guess. <laughs> How was it that time? Catch the Flash, Sunday on CBS. In the economy this year, with the sliding stock market, slumping real estate sales, and a shrinking employment outlook, the big question is, what the hell is going on here? For an answer, we've invited a panel of experts to participate with us via satellite hookup. Arguing the case that we're now in the beginning stages of a mild downturn is Alan Trugman of the Brookings Institution. Taking the view that the economy is in fact quite healthy is David Grossman of the RAND Corporation. And espousing the contention that we are already in the midst of a serious recession is independent economist Christopher McCann. <laughs> we'll hear what they all have to say later in the program if there's time. Senators Cranston, DeConcini, McCain, Glenn, and Regal, also known as the Keating Five, had a rough 1990. But 1991 could be better if their new public image has anything to do with it. The Keating Five <laughs> has gone on tour as the California Raisins. <laughs> music and dancing and comedy with a little basket passing to raise money for their legal defense. Uh, that's uh, Cranston, by the way, second from the left. And after decades of planning and years of digging, workers from England and France finally met this year under the English Channel, where soon cars and trains will connect the two countries. After this champagne celebration, a confused British worker attempting to return home accidentally became the first man to walk from London to Paris. It's been a very tough year for NASA, but the beleaguered space agency is hoping to end 1990 on a high note. Standing by at Cape Canaveral with more is our own Steve Casper. Steve? Tom, I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but as you can see, the countdown here at Cape Canaveral for today's shuttle launch has been stopped again. And yet another in a year of failures for NASA. We've had fuel leaks, aborted takeoffs, screwed up missions, and I don't even want to talk about that Hubble fiasco. All in all, Tom, I guess you can say it's been a year of bad timing for... Uh, Excuse me, Tom. Oh, Tom, this is terrific. The problem which has caused the delay has just been corrected, which means we can move the countdown into its crucial last hour. Now, if the shuttle passes some critical pre-launch test, then we can expect liftoff to be right on schedule, which should be approximately in one hour. It is, of course, unless nothing else goes wrong. <coughs> we'll have more on that story as it develops. Hopefully, there'll be no more delays. Well, 1990 has been a year marked by raucous controversy about sex in government-sponsored art. Today, the NEA announced that while artists will lose points in grant competition by causing people to think about sex in an inappropriate way, 
the same artists may actually gain points if they can cause people who are already thinking about sex in an inappropriate way to think about something else. Tempers flared in Canada this past year when a new 18-hole golf course was built over a sacred Mohawk burial ground. When their protests were ignored by the government, outraged members of the tribe struck back by building a traditional Indian archery range on Mohawk property less than 100 yards from the 17th green. Coming up, the first test of a pedestrian airbag. We'll see how it went later. calls up more reserves. <laughs> You're an important man, and a lot of people depend on you, so you can't let them see you sweat. But sometimes that's not easy. It's at times like this that you need new desert shield. Desert shield deodorant, specially formulated to keep you fresh even under intense pressure. Jim Henson. Oh, yes. Sammy Davis, Jr. Maybe. <laughs> Donald Trump. No way. <laughs> Gabriel, be an angel, would you? Send in the next applicant. <laughs> Mrs. Helmsley, it's good of you to come. Please, sit down. This won't take long, just a few routine questions. I'm not guilty of doing anything. The government owes us money. Please, Leona, I'm a saint, not a CPA. <laughs> Let's not deal with earthly matters, shall we? Do you know that most people think we didn't pay any income tax? We paid 300 $344 million. That's a lot of money. Render unto Caesar, Mrs. Helmsley, that which is Caesar's, and unto God. That... Nobody, nobody defended me. It may have seemed that way to you at the time, Leona, but even when you walk through the valley of the shadow of death, the Lord is with you. I was not defended. His rod and his staff shall comfort you. Nobody took the stand for me, don't you see? Let it go, nobody, nobody took the stand for me. Drop the... it! Let it lie! It's history! <laughs> uh, let's look at the other side of the ledger, shall we? What good have you done in your life? As you know, two weeks ago we lit the Empire State Building in, in red, white, and blue. And you consider that to be a good deed? I don't know whether it's good or not good. Hallelujah! The first thin ray of sunshine breaks through the dark clouds of earthly pride, Leona. Is there something else you'd like to tell me? Uh, something from your heart? Something about taxes? Well, I'm guilty. Help me. In Dolce Jubilee! <laughs> I have not seem to hear those first genuine words of honest repentance. I did nothing wrong. <laughs> Leona, only just now you told me you were not... I'm not going to jail. I am not going to jail. We are not talking about jail here, Mrs. Helmsley. We are talking about eternal damnation in hell. It's crazy. It's fantasy, and if you believe in the tooth fairy, you'll believe in that. I am the tooth fairy. <laughs> All right, Leona, my little lost lamb, it is easier for a camel to pass through the eye of a needle than it is for a rich person to enter the kingdom of heaven. Hasn't anyone ever told you that? I didn't believe it. Of course not. Why didn't you believe it? I wrote that. Why? 
Money is wonderful. It's wonderful. Money is evil. Money is the root of all evil. Jesus, Mary and Joseph, woman. Don't you understand that? <laughs> what, are you listening to the horrors? <laughs> In any case, money really isn't going to do you much good where you're going. Thank you so much for coming. You and Mr. Trump will be informed of our decision shortly. The only thing I'll say about Donald Trump is I wouldn't believe him if his tongue was notarized. <laughs> well, I suggest you learn to get along with Donald because you're going to be traveling together. And you won't be needing any of your heavy clothes. Totally sincere, may I last and they fly to torment me. Hmm? I need to say several flies. For Mikhail Gorbachev, 1990 was a real roller coaster ride. Unpopular at home, he faced open revolts from most of the Soviet Union's angry republics. But he was popular everywhere else. <laughs> he made important trade deals with the West, and then the best news he'd heard all year, he won the Nobel Peace Prize. Speaking of the Nobels, he was the first time the awards were televised by the Fox Network. Ed O'Neill from Married with Children served as host. We gave senior correspondent Helen St. Thomas a long list of questions and sent her out to the streets to find out what the mood of the country is at this very moment. Here's what she brought back. Do you think that we are in a recession? Hell yes, we're in a recession. <laughs> I sold my BMW 325E convertible. I had to buy a goddamn Geo. Hell yes, we are in a recession. <laughs> what do you think is the greatest problem? facing the country today. Well, now that's easy. It's men. Men are still the greatest problem facing this country today. Men are paid more than women, still. Men run things, still. And they can't be serious about a relationship. Men, M-E-N, greatest problem facing country. Definitely. You think President Bush is doing a good job as president? Well, I don't know. Is he serious about having a relationship? If he is, then I suppose he's doing a good job. Even if he is a man. But one man or woman had the greatest impact on the world events in 1990? Patrick Swayze. No, Kevin Costner. Oh, yes. Oh, yes, my friend. Definitely Kevin Costner. Are you more optimistic, more pessimistic, less optimistic, or less pessimistic now than you were at the end of 1989? I don't even understand what the hell that means! You Helen St. Thomas and her informal poll on the mood of the country at this moment. Annabelle? Well, in November, the crew members of a Northwest Airlines passenger jet were sentenced to time in jail because the pilot had consumed 15 rum and cokes before takeoff, while his two crewmen split six pitchers of beer. 
Under current FAA regulations, the limit for pilots is 10 mixed drinks, <laughs> and for other members of the flight crew, two pitchers of beer. <laughs> Ellis Island reopened this past year. The gateway to the new world for millions, Ellis Island remains a symbol of freedom and liberty for the rest of the world. <laughs> Earlier this year, newscaster Connie Chung announced that she would be cutting back on her assignments for CBS so that she and her tabloid journalist husband, Maury Povich, could spend more time trying to conceive a child. <laughs> Uh, that, of course, is not Connie Chung <laughs> and Maury Povich. One of the major stories this fall was Congress's inability to agree on a budget, which caused the temporary shutdown of the government. The layoff of all non-essential employees impacted even the White House, where Vice President Dan Quayle was sent home. <laughs> and speaking of Dan Quayle, we'll find out what he did in 1990. Here's what people are saying about Reagan, an American life. It is a moving and touching and horrible story. Reagan, an American life. On sale now at fine bookstores everywhere. Coming up, Yasser Arafat and Muammar Gaddafi spend Christmas in Malibu. I guess it all comes down to values. Like taking pride in what you do and taking pride in your local community. It's people that count. People and technology. And an honest way of doing business. And that's why when they decided to build a Saturn, they decided to build it right here in Twin Peaks. Welcome to another installment of Snigglets. Now, you ever have this happen to you? You go to a movie theater and you go up to the concession stand and you say, I'd like a small popcorn, please. And there's this like 15 year old white snake disciple behind the counter <laughs> who says to you, well, you know, for 25 cents more, you can get the medium popcorn. And you say, no thanks, small is just fine. And then the next thing you know, they hang you this giant industrial vat of popcorn <laughs> for 16 bucks. <laughs> you say, this is a small, apparently so, because now they also have the mini micro popcorn and the subatomic popcorn. <laughs> it's a practice called corn extortion. <laughs> Watch out for it. In fact, when you come to fast foods, it kind of opens up a vocabulary all its own, doesn't it? Ever open up a bag of potato chips to find that they're 95% air? It's called the snapmosphere. In fact, the practice of giving exotic names to otherwise mundane products is called food winking. I'll give an example. Salsa Rio. As if anybody's going to think these corn-flavored roofing shingles are going to remind them of a carnival in Rio. I think so. <laughs> so let's move on down here to the cereal section, one of my favorites. The sound that uh, Captain Crunch makes when you pour milk over it is odomatopoeia. <laughs> Hear that? <laughs> there it is. So, in fact, Captain Crunch himself could be described as a Crispian. <clears throat> Crispian, of course, is any actor who's hired basically because his name helps sell the cereal. Snap, Crackle, and Pop are also Crispians. Come on, nobody would hire them if their names were Sputter, Thud, and Whiz, would they? <laughs> there are a lot of scientific properties attached to foods that man can't explain. For instance, the magnetized particles that hold some Fig Newtons together <laughs> are called neutrons. <laughs> and finally, any two milk duds fused together by accident are called milk dudes. <laughs> Thank you very much. I'm Rich Hall. Thanks, Rich. Well, as we promised, a live interview with Saddam Hussein. Coming up later tonight's show.
<laughs> but first, in California, it was the Mediterranean flute, fruit fly. In the Northeast, the lime tick. As once again this year, Americans from every region suffered through infestations of annoying insects. But this year, our patients seemed to be running out, and we were more willing, both as a society and as individuals, to dump massive quantities of noxious chemicals on the little bastards. I was always one of these live and let live types until one day I found a cockroach in my potato salad. Well, that was it for me. But finding a really effective pest killer wasn't easy. That is, until I discovered new goop. With a single coating of goop, your house becomes one giant insect trap. Here, kids. Here's your snack. <laughs> new goop. They'll come to visit, but they won't leave. And chalk up one for the environment this year as McDonald's, the biggest fast food chain in the world, finally decided to get rid of those foam boxes that are so harmful to the ozone layer. Constant pressure from environmental groups was the difference. Proof that an active, involved public can change the way things are. Who gets a Big Mac? Yeah, that's me. <laughs> Large fries. <laughs> we'll be right back. And coming up, new guests arrive in Iraq. When you turn 55, you become eligible for Master Bank's Senior Silver Card. With the Silver Card, you'll save 10% on every purchase. But that's not all. Because at 75, you'll automatically receive Master Bank's Senior Gold Card. It's good for a full 15% off at stores, restaurants, and hotels all across America. But even that's not all. Because at 100, you'll receive Master Bank's Senior Platinum Card. It's good for 20 I said 20! That's right, 20% off everything you buy! With Master Bank's senior cards, you too will say, It just keeps getting better. I listened with fascination to President Havel's brilliant speech. He spoke of... Her voice was the voice of an angel. And her milk-white skin and the air of nobility bespoke a different woman than the one he knew. The woman whose passions ran wild one night in Vienna. Um, make that Prague. The woman whose passions ran wild one night in Prague. A night when every star in the heavens shined upon the two of them. <laughs> Nixon to kick around anymore. <laughs> well, I'm not a crook. I shall resign the presidency effective that noon tonight. How many years will we be paying for the savings and loan crisis? The world would, you, would you believe 25? No. no. <laughs> would you believe 35? No. Would you believe 45? No. Would you believe 55? No. Yeah. Would you believe 65? Yeah. This portion of Not Necessarily the Year in Review 1990 is brought to you by the Don King Chia Pets, everybody's favorite Christmas gift. scandal widened again in the wake of Senator Dennis DeConcini's impassioned defense of SNL bandit Charles Keating. As a matter of fact, when I met Mother Teresa, I believe it was in 1986 in this city, and I was introduced to her, and 
told what state I came from, first thing she said, how is my friend Charlie Keating? Today, Mother Teresa was indicted. <laughs> this just in, Disco is finally dead. In June, the big summit meeting in Washington between Presidents Bush and Gorbachev. And who was there but our very own Helen St. Thomas. Here's a clip. But the biggest problem facing this country will not be the spread of nuclear weapons, or acid rain, or drugs, or crime, or the destruction of the rainforest in Brazil, or the ozone layer, or the lack of any kind of moral fiber in our country's leaders. No, it won't be any of those things. Because, <clears throat> excuse me, I've lost my train of thought. Oh, yes, no, no, it will not be any of those things because it will be the same thing. It will be the same damn thing as it's always been. Shall I spell it out for you? Huh? Huh? M E N, men, inconsiderate, self congratulatory, self absorbed, self centered. Did I say self-absorbed, huh? Self-absorbed, self, 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 selfish, selfish men, men. That will be the problem, Mr. President, and his men, as it will all we'll, we'll have more summit highlights if time permits. <laughs> <laughs> Annabelle? Meanwhile, the latest development in fertility research is a new technique which will enable women past menopause to become pregnant. This means that Hope Stedman will be able to continue to have babies and whine about it when she's 40-something and 50-something. A prospect so frightening that legislation to ban the technique has already been introduced in several states. As promised, here they are, America's new favorite couple. Ted Turner and Jane Fonda. Ted, what's it like having a relationship with Jane Fonda? I was looking for some more details, maybe, Ted. Uh, as far as I can see, it's going great. That's it, going great, that's still... Not a very long answer, but you know, I'm not used to really talking too much about uh, my personal life. Well, Jane, you've never been the shy type. How do you view the relationship? Oh, I think it's changing history. Great. Uh, well, let's get right down to it, kids. A lot of couples like to wait until they're married before they, you know. Have you guys uh, had... Uh... We, we have had, but not, not, not... Uh... Not that serious. Uh, Jane, you haven't... Uh... No. Not yet. You're trying to tell me in all the time you've been going together, you guys haven't uh, even once... In the back of one of those limos you ride in, you haven't... Well, that's what I said. Well, what's, what's the problem, Ted? You guys don't like it? What seems to be the... Hold up. In, in, in too large a doses, uh, it can kind of addle your brain a little bit. You're saying sex can addle your brain? Well, you know, in, in anything, you can overdo it. So you're saying sex isn't an important part of your relationship. Is that what you're trying to tell me? I don't think that uh, sex should be a, uh, a issue. If, uh, if it's a woman and she, she does a good job... Of... That's good, Ted. Uh, <laughs> but personally, I think it's better to do the forbidden dance once in a while. What does that mean? <laughs> well, Jane, yeah. it's when two people... Never mind. Jane, uh, you have a pretty strong influence on Ted. In fact, Ted, uh, you never were a liberal, right? No, but I am now. In fact, uh, Jane's your Svengali. Uh, some people have said, Jane, that you even manipulated Ted into marrying you. Is that true? Yeah, I think it is true, but we're still only talking about the tip of the iceberg. <laughs> I'm just kidding. You're not even used to be. What a cute couple. <laughs> Ted Turner and ladies and gentlemen, and, and, hey, and Jane Fonda. We're a good news broadcasting team, don't you think? Yeah, right, Jane. <laughs> we'll be right back. <laughs> well, that's to the best of my recollection, although I don't have a really a clear memory of these events and how they were, and the days that they were transpiring. Now, for every time, life turns the heat up on you. I can't really recall, although I do, I do have a feeling now that uh, at that time... A new kind of underarm deodorant. Degree. Well, I'm not sure I'm understanding this. Uh, uh. New Degree is body heat sensitive, 
so that every time your temperature rises... Did you ever authorize or approve John Poindexter to make any false statements to Congress? What is the, what is that question? What? <laughs> New degree when you need it bad. Impotent? Dial 1-900-IMP. Oh, TNT. Three dollars for the first minute. Jumping into ice cold water in the dead of winter. Walking across hot coals. Hang by your fingernails 5,000 feet above nothing at all. Driving a dog sled team for five days straight across Alaska. Snow jumping. Bull baiting. Jumping off bridges. And running around in circles in the rain. All coming up on Wide World of Dumb Sports. Tonight. Who will blink first in the Persian Gulf? Here's Tom Parks with a commentary. Who will blink first? Make no mistake, Saddam Hussein will blink first. Why do I say this? Because Saddam Hussein can't stop blinking. <laughs> this guy blinks more than a don't walk sign. He couldn't not blink if he wanted to. In short, he's a blinking fool. Some may disagree, but that's my opinion. I'm Tom Parks. Thank you, Tom. And here's some good news. The Cumberland River nuclear weapons plant in Kentucky, one of the dirtiest and most accident-ridden in the country, has been shut down, painted, and converted into a fruitcake factory. <laughs> Although the cakes are slightly radioactive, authorities are quick to point out the vast majority of fruitcakes go uneaten. <laughs> Ever conscious of consumer demands, the food industry this year introduced new and healthier alternatives to traditional food products. Good evening. Good evening, sir. Tonight's special is a delicate filet of imitation crab meat swimming in I can't believe it's not butter sauce and seasoned to perfection with our salt substitute. It is topped off with the Schur's Helene cheese. I recommend our non-alcoholic beer to go with that. For dessert, I suggest our fat-free ice cream look-alike and a cup of decaffeinated coffee beverage with our non-dairy whitener. Why don't I just give you a few minutes to think about it, all right? Americans have answered the call to arms to protect and defend certain basic values. We hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men are created equal. The right of citizens to vote shall not be denied on account of race, color, or condition of previous servitude. Yes, we are a peaceful people, slow to anger, reluctant to fight. But let every dictator know that there are certain things he threatens at his own peril. Democracy, freedom, equality, and cheap gasoline. And now here's an incisive look at how to survive during the holiday season. Correspondent and media creature, Meryl Marco. Thanks, everybody. Well, you know, one thing you can count on during the holiday season is that there will be a lot of people eating meals together. And since half of those people will probably be women, tonight I would like to refresh the memories of those of you who may have forgotten by re-explaining a few of the rules about how to take a woman to dinner. Oh, 
Hi there. Hi. Come on in. Now, here's the first point. When you walk into a woman's house, don't just stand there looking around. Say something. You have a cat or something? <laughs> it's better if you say something nice. Now, at this point, be on the lookout for the following trick question. And remember, no matter who says it, no matter what the circumstances, the answer is always no. Do you mind answering something for me? Um, do I look fat in this dress? No. <laughs> Very good. Remember, no matter how much whining takes place, the answer is always no. If a woman looks fat, you'll pay later. <laughs> That's good. By the way, it's never a good sign if you seem to be dressed to go to two different places. You're probably headed where he's dressed for. It's one of the great ironies of life that when men feel really comfortable, they stop talking. Whereas, when women feel really comfortable, they start. Bear in mind that a woman is going to want you to talk to her at dinner, even in the event of a widescreen TV. You mean just during the commercial breaks and stuff like that, right? No. Yeah, that's what I mean, during the commercial breaks. So, do you come to this restaurant a lot? Oh, I think you could say that. I mean, look around you. I've slept with uh, every woman in this room. <laughs> This brings us to topics of dinner conversation that I think you're going to want to avoid. You know, you're a real refreshing change of pace for me. Yeah. yeah. My last three girlfriends were real knockouts. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I mean that as a compliment. It, it's nice to be with someone like you because the real pretty ones everyone's staring at. There simply is no winning when it comes to talking about old girlfriends. Don't. So, do you like sports? Oh, yeah. Did you see the Kings Islanders game last night? Gretzky had this great hat trick. Excuse me. Just because a woman says she likes sports still does not give you the green light to talk about hockey. Did you see that game last night? He oh, him. that was, was great, incredible. wasn't it? By the way, it's not polite to have better chemistry with your waitress than you do with your dinner companion. <laughs> Thank you, we'll be fine now. You can just go on, we're fine. Do you know anything about rashes? Because I've, I've got these open, runny sores all over my arm. Right? Open sores, never a good topic. Or would you like anything from the dessert tray? Ooh. Yeah, I do. Would, would you like something? No, no, you'll probably want that one. No, don't you? take this. No. It's never necessary to ask a woman if she wants dessert. The answer is always yes. She wants dessert, but she wants you to order it, and she wants to pick at it with her fork. You know, if you wanted a dessert, why didn't you just order a dessert? It's never necessary to berate a woman this way when you understand that now she has the dessert she wants. The dessert she wants is contained within yours. I don't know, pick up the case. I don't want to eat all of your dessert. This brings us to the check. Let's check. You know, I should pick that up. <laughs> I don't need to comment on this, do I? By the way, next time, order the chocolate stuff. Don't go with this fruit crap. We don't need this. Well, there you have it. Good luck and bon appetit. Do you have a couple of bucks? <laughs> well, Merrill, you've, you've ended the year yes, just the way you began it. Using up valuable news time to do fluff pieces only serve to let you appear on television with attractive young men. Yes! In other news, former Secretary of State George Shultz returned to the White House today for the unveiling of his official portrait, presided over by his good friend, the current Secretary of State, James Baker. Have you seen? Have you seen? <laughs> but ladies and gentlemen, I have the pleasure pleasure now of unveiling the official portrait of the Honorable George P. Schultz. If somebody told me how to unveil it, I'd know a little bit better than I do. <laughs> Indeed, we do share a fondness for tattoos. Coming up, our man in Pakistan. We, we haven't heard from him, uh, not a word. <laughs> See that wall up ahead, Doris? Yes, Harold. We're gonna crash into that wall. Crazy? No, I'm not crazy. I have a driver's side airbag. 
You just have a secret. I'll survive. You won't. And no one will suspect a thing. No! The driver's side airbag. Advantage. Chrysler. Coming up, Iraq's elite hopping brigade is sent to Kuwait. Go ahead, splash it on, indulge and enjoy. New unscented Chanel Number no. Five. Nobody will know you're wearing it, but you. This late-breaking story, in response to the beheading of three of its photographers, Playboy has decided to cancel its May pictorial, The Women of Saudi Arabia. <laughs> And now, a tip for those of you who will be traveling during the holiday season. If you should board your airplane only to discover that you are seated next to a screaming baby, remember that according to FAA regulations, up to 50 pounds can be stuffed into the overhead compartment. <laughs> Let's see our old friend Saddam Hussein is doing with that exploding cigar. <laughs> Oldest trick in the book. <laughs> and finally, on behalf of President Bush. And Saddam Hussein. And Vice President Quayle. And Rich Hall. And Leona Helmsley. And Meryl Marco. And Jane Fonda and Ted Turner. And Stuart Pankin and Danny Breen. And Ann Bloom and the Ever Ready Rabbit. And Barbara Bush and Margaret Thatcher. And Ron and Nancy and Marion Barry and the Keating Five and Lucy Webb. And The Flash. And on behalf of everyone here at NNTN, good, good night, night and, and Happy, Happy New, New Year. Year. This portion of Not Necessarily the Year in Review, 1990, has been brought to you by the Sealed Prosthetic Mattress. Still, the safest place for your money. <laughs> and by Ford, Chrysler, and General Motors. Bigger engines for your driving pleasure. And now, ladies and gentlemen, please rise to honor America and join us in the singing of our national anthem. <laughs> <laughs>